Hi, my name is Marcus Huskins and welcome to the video. Now in this video, we're going to be taking a look at using Revoice Pro version 4 with Pro Tools. Okay, so first off, we've got a track in Pro Tools over here. Let's have a really quick listen. We can identify some of the issues. My heart is an ocean. Nothing can save it. Nothing at all. Okay, so as you can hear, we have some obvious timing issues in terms of these two lead vocal doubles not lining up with our main lead vocal. And in addition to that, we also have an issue with respect to pitch. So if we take a listen to just this lead vocal track and I play from here. My heart is an ocean, nothing can save it. You'll see that we have a tuning issue that we have to fix. And last but not least, we have a mono lead vocal harmony over here. And I'd like to use Revoice Pro to create a realistic sounding stereo double. We'll have a really quick listen to that. My heart is an ocean. Nothing can save it. Nothing at all. So first things first, we need to get our audio sent over from the Pro Tools timeline into Revoice Pro. Now to do this, we need to use the Revoice Pro Link plugin. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna choose the Audio Suite drop-down menu. We will scroll to Synchro Arts and we can find Revoice Pro Link. Now if you're not seeing these categories over here, we can actually find this in another area as well. So if we scroll to Other, you'll also see that we have Revoice Pro Link available. Okay, so as you can see, this is pretty self-explanatory. We have a destination track in Revoice Pro, and then we have our capture and our spot buttons. When we're sending audio from the Pro Tools timeline over to Revoice, it's simply just a matter of choosing the proper destination track and then choosing capture. Now, a couple things to point out before we go ahead and do this. First of all, in an effort to save time, I've already gone ahead and created my Revoice Pro session over here. I've created the proper number of tracks that I need, and I've also named these to be a really accurate representation in terms of what they're going to be. So for example, you'll see here that we have our main timing guide and our lead vocal double one from Da, lead vocal double two from Da. In addition, you'll see that we have our lead vocal double one, fixed Revoice Pro output, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you need to create some new tracks, all we need to do is either right click in this black area and choose the add tracks option, or we can go to tracks and simply click add tracks. This will allow us to do that. And last but not least, if you find yourself working in a similar way, we can go ahead and save this as our default session so that every new Revoice Pro document that we create will come up with the proper track names. Now, another thing to point out is let's have a really quick look at our session settings in Pro Tools. So you can see we have a time code frame rate of 25 and our session start is zeros across the board. Let's have a really quick look in Revoice. We're gonna go to View and Settings and let's make sure that these match. So you can see our Simpty time is starting at zero and our frame rate is at 25, so we're good. And last but not least, if you want to, you can also go ahead and enter the BPM into your Revoice Pro session settings, and this will allow you to have a bars and beats reference that matches your DAW session. Okay, with all that said, let's go ahead and start sending these tracks over. I'm just gonna select this, make sure that I've got the proper destination track, and click Capture. Now, in addition to selecting the clip, we could also highlight, or we could use the shortcuts in Pro Tools. For example, I can choose the semicolon option to select this track, and choose this and capture this one. We will select the clip and again, we want to choose the proper track and click capture. Notice these are all being sent over as I click these and last but not least, our vocal harmony and we'll go ahead and click capture. Okay, so now that we've got all the tracks sent over, let's go ahead and continue working directly in Revoice Pro. Okay, so first things first, we need to fix the tuning issue that happened in our lead vocal. Now we're looking at a lot of tracks over here, so I wanna simplify my view. Let's go ahead and shift click these two tracks over here, drag them over to the right. This has automatically created a track group. Now, if I drag this out, you'll see it's also named it. And this allows me to do things like, for example, I can mute all of the tracks associated with this group or solo. And in addition to that, I can also toggle the visibility. Now, one other thing I wanna do here really quickly is if you head to tracks and auto size track heights, this will automatically maximize your vertical real estate in terms of your screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and solo this track and I'm gonna click this icon, which allows us to make this track the full height in terms of our vertical resolution. Now, let's go ahead and zoom in. We can use the T or R keys to do this. And the first thing I need to do is right click and make this a warp region. This will allow us to have access to the tuning options in Revoice Pro. So let's go ahead and play this. 
Okay, so this is the issue that we need to correct. All I need to do is click and drag up or down, and I can tune this particular note. Again, we'll play from the top. My heart is an ocean. Nothing can save it. Nothing. Okay, perfect. Now, while we're here, I want you to focus your attention to these aqua blue areas. These represent things such as breaths or consonants or sibilants that don't have a specific pitch trace. Now, while working in Revoice Pro, we've got a really awesome tool that allows us to make some manual adjustments to these. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the S key, and you'll notice that we have these pink and purple lines over here. If we click this little slider in the top, we can adjust the amplitude in terms of how these are displayed. Now, essentially what this allows you to do is anything that has a pink line versus a purple, we can actually make some adjustments to these. My heart is an ocean, nothing can save it. Okay, so let's say for example in this area over here, this one doesn't seem too bad, but this one seems a little excessive. If I wanted to reduce some of the sibilance here, I could simply click, hold, and drag. And you'll notice that this waveform updated. Let's back out a little bit. We'll have a listen. Ocean, nothing can save it. Versus. Ocean, nothing can save. So that is just a little bit too much edge for me. But if I was to go ahead and do that adjustment, then we can take that down. Now, in addition to being able to adjust these manually, we can also hold down, for example, the Option or Alt key, and this will snap us to 3 dB increments. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, so I'm happy with that one. Now let's have a quick listen to this next phrase over here. So twisted and broken, lost in the storm. Okay, I'll tell you what, this area over here where he says twisted, this sounds a little bit aggressive to me. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here. In fact, this time I'll hold down my Alt key and let's have a listen. So twisted and broken. Versus. So twisted and broke. Okay, so that works for me. So we'll keep that. And the last thing I want to point out is this is not just for reducing things. If, for example, you have an area, like, for example, a consonant of some sort, where you wanted to actually bring up or increase the intelligibility of that, we could go ahead and do that as well. So, for example, this section with the K. Twisted and broken. I could go ahead and move this up. Let me go ahead and just pull this. And you'll see that that updated. Let's have a listen now. Twisted and broken. Versus. Twisted and broken. Okay, so I'm happy with that. We will go ahead and leave this. Now, in order to exit this view, I'm just going to click my S key, and now we are exited out. One other thing that I want to focus on really, really quickly is a new feature that was added in Revoice Pro 4, and that is warp vibrato points. So with this track sold out, let's have a quick listen to this section. Nothing at all. Okay, so this is what we would expect to hear. This is the natural performance that the singer gave us. Let's go ahead over here, and I'm going to choose my warp point tool, and I want to just add a warp point over here to anchor down this section, and let's add another one over here. Now, the next thing I want to do is let's add a warp vibrato start and end point. Now, the way that we do this is we right click and we have to determine the point at which we want it to be added. So, for example, I'm going to choose this point over here, right click warp points, and I'm going to add a vibrato start warp point over here. And then after this section over here, after the word is done, let's go ahead, right click warp points and let's add a vibrato end warp point. Okay, so now, again, we can have a listen to this performance. Nothing at all. Now, with regular time compression or expansion, if we were to drag out this audio to make a change to this, keep in mind I've anchored down my after and my before with normal warp points, this is what we would expect to happen. You can see that this has been elongated. Now, I've pulled this quite a bit, so it might not sound natural, but let's pay attention to the vibrato. Nothing at all. Okay, so that's what we would expect, and that's completely normal, because all we're doing is time compressing or expanding that section of audio. Now let's take a look at what warp vibrato points do. So if we hover to the very top and click, you'll notice we have this purple section with these dotted lines. Let's drag this out now. Keep your eye on the vibrato pitch trace. It changed. Let's have a listen to this. Nothing at all. Do you see what happened there? We 
actually changed the vibrato. So that's what Revoice Pro 4 is doing. As opposed to just time compressing or expanding, it's actually reinterpreting the vibrato and redrawing it in a more natural context. But this is for a completely different video altogether. Just wanted to point that out. Let's go ahead and have one more listen to that. In at all. Versus. In at all. In at all. Pretty amazing, but let's leave that for another video. I'm just going to shift click to delete my warp points that I've added over here. Okay, let's return back to our regular default view over here. And now essentially we need to adjust the timing and pitch of both of these vocal regions over here. So in order to do this, we're going to create an APT process or an audio performance transfer. So I'm going to go ahead and click my B key. And this is brought up this window over here. We're going to use an APT. We will use the selected audio as a length. And now in terms of presets, I happen to know that this music slightly loose pitch and time works really well. So we'll go ahead and choose that. And now it's just a matter of choosing the proper options here. Now, essentially what we're doing is we're creating two separate APT processes because we need one process for both the lead vocal double one and the lead vocal double two. But rather than creating these separately, we can go ahead and create these together. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to choose my main timing guide as my guide and my dub track. I'm going to choose the first dub. Now I'm going to choose this fix offset option and I'm going to choose the first track that I want my Revoice Pro output to occur on. Now from there, we just need to go ahead and select two for the number of processes. And now Revoice Pro will automatically create two APT processes at the same time. Okay, so it's gone ahead and done that. Let's have a quick listen. Keep in mind, this is where we started. My heart is an ocean. Nothing can save it. Nothing at all. Okay, now very quickly, I'm just going to pan these out because I want to hear these in a more musical context. And now let's have a listen to the fixed result. My heart is an ocean. Nothing can save it. Nothing at all. Perfect. And again, as a reminder to where we started off. My heart is an ocean. Nothing can save it. Nothing at all. Okay, perfect. So essentially, we're pretty much done here. Now, one thing that I wanted to point out is that if you take a look at this section over here, we have a lot of information that's being displayed here. If you want to simplify or change your view of what you're seeing, we can simply toggle the visibility off. So for example, if we're looking at this energy trace, I could go ahead and toggle that off. Maybe I want to see the guide pitch. This is the pitch of the guide track. This would be the dub pitch. And based on which track or which process output you have selected, we will be able to see that information. Now, in addition to that, we also have this white line over here, which represents the output pitch. Now, this is the pitch that has been rendered into the new audio based on the settings of your APT and based on the pitch of your guide track. So, for example, if we're taking a look at our lead vocal double one, which is the fixed Revoice Pro output, if we select this and click the P key, you notice that we have access to the parameters over here. Now, I want you to focus your attention to this section over here because this is something that was added in Revoice Pro version 4. If we take a look at these two parameters, tuning and fit, watch what happens here if I switch to dialog mode. So, this was the only algorithm that was available in previous versions of Revoice Pro. Keep your eye on these two sections. So you notice this changed to tolerance and transfer strength, but in music mode, it changes to tuning and fit. And if you hover your cursor over here, we have a basic description of what's happening here, but we can also have some visual cues in terms of using the output pitch over here. If I, for example, slide this up, Keep an eye on what happens over here. You'll see that this white line has changed. So this gives you kind of a visual representation of what's happening. And of course, as always, the best thing to do would be to simply listen to your results. But I'm going to go ahead, go back to factory and choose music, slightly loose pitch and time, because I know that this happens to work great for 99% of the material that I throw at it. Okay, so we've got this done now. Let's go ahead and I'm going to just use Option or Alt Solo to deselect all these solos. Let's go ahead and do the same thing by shift clicking these tracks, dragging over here. Let's mute them all, toggle their visibility off, and let's bring back in our vocal low harmony. 
So essentially, now that we've got everything done, we just need to create a doubler process. I'm going to go ahead and click the B key. This time, instead of APT, I'm going to choose a doubler. Now, this is fairly simple. We're going to choose a doubler process. I'm going to choose a preset. And I happen to know that Stereo Vocal Mild works for 99% of the material I throw at it. So now we can choose the selected audio as a length, or if we would rather, we can also make a playback range selection. As you can see, there's lots of information at the beginning and end here, so we don't necessarily need this to be the full length. Okay, so next up, we just need to choose our input track, which is going to be our Vox Low Harmony. Again, this is the one that we sent over from Pro Tools. And the output track, this is one of the tracks that we created in Revoice Pro, Vox Low Harmony, Revoice Pro Doubler Output. Click New Process, and we're good to go. Let's go ahead and have a quick listen to that. I'm just going to unmute both of these tracks. My heart is an ocean. Nothing can save it. Nothing at all. Keep in mind, this is coming from this track. So twisted and broken, lost in the storm. So Revoice Pro has created a really realistic sounding stereo double for me. Okay, so now we have everything done. Now it's time to get our work sent back over to the Pro Tools timeline. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the visibility back on all of my tracks and let's toggle the mute off. First thing we need to do is simply select the track or the Revoice Pro output that we wanna send back over. Now let's just resize our screen over here. And as you can see, we already have the Revoice Pro Link plugin active. So all we really need to do is select the proper track in Pro Tools and we wanna spot. Now, one thing to keep in mind before doing this is that you may want to back up your original work. And if that's the case, then just go ahead and duplicate the playlist. In this case, though, I'm just going to go ahead and replace these audio clips. So now if we click spot, you notice that this has been replaced. We see the clip name has been updated. Let's go ahead, give this a really quick play. My heart is an ocean. Nothing can save it. Awesome. So now I'm going to come back over to Revoice Pro. And in fact, let's zoom out a little bit. And I'm just going to make sure that I choose the proper track. So for example, this one over here. And then we will just highlight an area in Pro Tools. And let's go ahead and click Spot. So now I've brought this one back in. And now I'm just going to scroll down in Pro Tools, come back over to Revoice, choose the second processed output that we fixed, Lead Vocal Double 2. And it's properly selected in Pro Tools. We will go ahead and spot that. And last but not least, we have this stereo double that we created. So let's go ahead and select that. And in Pro Tools, I'm just going to select an area on this timeline, and we'll go ahead and spot that. Now it's brought this file back in. So now if we go ahead and remove the Revoice Pro Link plugin, and we go ahead and expand our Pro Tools screen, let's have a listen to everything now. I'll just mute the music to start off with. My heart is an ocean. Nothing can save it. Nothing at all. And if I bring our music back in. So twisted and broken, lost in the storm. So that's using Revoice Pro with Pro Tools. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.